This is a very special occasion with such high stakes for both clubs. Portsmouth, who sent Southampton towards relegation in 2005 when Harry Redknapp was manager here at St Mary's. And the captains will line up with the referee, Neil Swarbrick. Dean Hammond back in the starting 11 as skipper and Nigel Adkins flanked by his assistant manager, Andy Crosby, who was his player at Scunthorpe twice. Nigel Adkins took Scunthorpe's promotion with a relegation squeezed in between, but this would be the biggest prize of all. Michael Appleton, his inner mental strength has really come to the fore in recent weeks after he retired early as a player at the tender age of 27. His is arguably the toughest job in football management. He's contended with the arrest of his owner, with administration, his parent company and club in administration, plus a 10-point deduction and transfer embargo. Trevor Birch is the joint administrator of Portsmouth, tasked with finding new owners. Easier said than done when the club is still hemorrhaging money. A £12.5 million pound wage bill and millions in debt. We're all set then at St Mary, promotion and relegation in the championship on the agenda. And with West Ham and Reading already laying down the gauntlet with those wins yesterday. It'll be Southampton to kick off here, and they will be attacking the northern end of the ground. Neil Swarbrick, the referee, sent off two West Ham players earlier in the season at Reading. Six red cards he's shown this season. Cool heads will be needed here in a red-hot South Coast derby. And the early stages will be also important particularly for those players that are coming to the Portsmouth side. Michael Appleton has had to juggle. He has a million and one things going against him, he told me in the week. Here's Fox, who played in the Premier League for Burnley. Lambert is the target in the Portsmouth penalty area, and away by Pompey skipper Jason Pearce. Carelessly out of the defence, and Alana not fouled by David Norris. And here comes Allen. Allen is looking for the run of his fellow Scott Chris Maguire. And away by Kelvin Davis. He's in a rich vein of form in the Southampton goal. Here's Lalana. First chance to run at the courts of the defence. Still Lalana. Bundled over by Halford. No free kick. To a bemused Adam Lalana. And here comes Norris. And Norris is getting away here from Hammond. And Hammond, Snydlin has pulled down the Portsmouth player and Morgan Schneiderlin has been shown a yellow card in the opening minutes of this game and Neil Swarbrick has already laid down his authority. Former French under-21 international Morgan Schneiderlin into the referee's notebook. Early opportunity for Portsmouth to put pressure on that Southampton goal mount. Well, he was getting away, Norris, and Schneiderlin held his arm and bundled him over. And the referee, I think, was right. Ready food for thought for the spectacled Southampton manager. And there are five red and white shirts in the Southampton wall. Chris Maguire once scored from the halfway line for the Scotland under-21s. And it is the Derby lone player with his right foot who goes for goal. Not that time. It was a good early start for Portsmouth and that will settle the nerves. You could see what Maguire was trying to do. So it didn't come down quickly enough. And the referee waves away Southampton appeals. Richardson does like to get forward from fullback. And teenager Karim Rekic will leave it here for Scott Allen. It is a very youthful Portsmouth side. And Allen goes in strongly. Schneidlin pulls himself to his feet. And 
Haaland maybe just had a piece of his shirt and Schneidlin goes to ground. Schneidlin who gave away a penalty at Blackpool last weekend. Just converted by Stephen Dobby. Now pressure on the Portsmouth goal mouth. As the ball is in from Fox and away by Etuhu. Collected by Schneidlin. And here's the Saints captain Hammond. Lalana cuts back at his right foot and then turns Halford the wrong way. Flat cross. Too far for Gouli. And Varney did really well to get away from the Brazilian. And across to cover well. That was the Southampton player, but Schneidlin has had a eventful start to this South Coast derby. He's already been shown a yellow card and now he's holding his knee. Well, Nigel Atkins grimacing on the Southampton bench. Well, he's holding the left knee, Schneiderlin. It's fourth season at Southampton for the young Frenchman. And let's look again, he went in bravely to try and dispossess Luke Varney. There was nothing malicious in the challenge, it was just a, an unlucky a collision of joints for Nigel Atkins, is a former physio. And he'll know that his player possibly twisted his knee there and is trying to have a word with the fourth official, Darren Sheldrake. Concern on the Southampton manager's face. Well, Dean Hammond was brought into the side with Jack Cork dropping to the bench. And Cork, who played in the Premier League with Burnley, might be an early option here for Southampton, who may be forced into a change. Andy Crosby, the assistant, and Dean Wilkins, the coach, with a problem here. Neil Swarbrick just trying to retain an element of calm. And let's just look at that challenge again. Did Schneider actually twist his knee as he went down there? The... Uh, well, Varney was streaking away down the left, Schneidling came in with the right foot and he looked like perhaps he was twisting the outside of his right knee. Lengthy stoppage in the early stages. Portsmouth, who are unbeaten in this fixture in their last three meetings, 2-4-1 wins in those matches as well. Ten minutes into the game, there's a lot of work going on on that knee of Morgan Schneiderlin. He gets a, a consolatory a pat on the head by a teammate, Morgan Schneiderlin, who was one of the players signed by Jan Portfleet, the Dutch former Southampton manager. And the club was going into administration and facing going out of business. Well, he's certainly limping heavily. And Jack Cork, who missed out on the starting 11, Waits to see if he gets his chance. And Portsmouth are making ground on the far side. And they've won another free kick and Tempers afraid here in the early stages. Chris Maguire not happy. And now the Scotland international Chris Maguire has been shown a yellow card to follow the booking for Morgan Schneidlin. And Maguire was on the ground, felt he'd been fouled. Oh, yes, certainly just stuck out a leg there and caught. Jose Fonte he thought he'd been fouled so took retribution and caught the back car fare of Jose Fonte who turned around with a rueful look at the Portsmouth centre forward now the change will be made Jack Cork son of crazy gang member Allen yet to score in two spells here at Southampton and what an opportunity would have been very disappointed to have missed out not starting today, but Morgan Schneidlin is unfit and unable to continue. So Jack Cork, who was a regular with Burnley last season. Well defended by Rocha. In a hurry, here's Norris, who will just calm down the pace of play. Away by Hoyvelt. Nigel Atkins was saying what a, an important central defensive pairing he has. Hoyvelt with the left and Jose Fonte, the right footed of the two. Ball bouncing awkwardly. 
Here's Gooley. Portsmouth have started well here. Big underdogs, Michael Appleton's side. Here's Etuhu. To muscled out of it by Hammond. Neat triangle. It's so indicative of the way Southampton play their football. Cork into the action for the first time and did it well. A difficult bouncing ball. The tricks are from Lalana, who tries to feed it here for Billy Sharp. Sharp's forced wide. Uh, Reckick is in front of him. And the 17-year-old Dutch defender did well for Portsmouth. Reckick with the Alice band. Here's Gooley. Once more Varney getting back and helping out his defence. Southampton will come again. Hoyvelt, the giant Dutch defender who moved from Celtic. Lambert, good old-fashioned centre-forward header down and that goes for the return as well. Lambert in towards the near post and away by Pierce. Hammond picks up the pieces, Richardson's trying to overlap as he does so often. Richardson's cross into the middle, it was missed by a Portsmouth defender, then away by the cavalry behind. And there's another Southampton player down hurt in the Portsmouth penalty area, and it's Billy Sharp. Well, Billy Sharp has had a turbulent couple of weeks, he missed a penalty at Blackpool last weekend, and now he's facing the full thunder of a Solent derby here at St Mary's in the opening exchanges. And he threw himself in there bravely sharp, it was missed by Pierce initially, and it was the boot of Ricardo Rocha that caught Billy Sharp full in the face. He's a big lad. And there's Nigel Adkins, well, he won promotion at Scunthorpe with Nigel Adkins back in 2007, Billy Sharp. Barney's knocked down. Kelvin Davis, is arguably in the form of his life at the moment, Kelvin Davis just missed out on the Championship Player of the Season award. Claire trying to get through as Sharp once more fully recovered from that knock. Luke Varney, who's figured in relegations with Sheffield Wednesday and on the final day of the Premier League season last year at Blackpool. The final match at Old Trafford will long live in the memory. No quarter being asked or given in these early stages between these fierce rivals. Jamie Ashdown is the Portsmouth goalkeeper and now the longest serving player for Pompey played in the derby that they described as demolition derby when Portsmouth beat Southampton 4-1 at Fratton Park seven years ago and Russia was strong and stood up against Lalana and the free kick has gone Southampton's way the former England under 21 was obstructed oh that's nasty from Ricardo Russia he led high with the left elbow to be fair Lalana didn't make a big meal of it Fox down the line Sharp. That sharp is tripped by Ricardo Rocha, who's going through a nervy couple of minutes. The former Lisbon defender saw his old employers make the Champions League semi final in midweek, but now he'll have some defending to do. Fox has such a good delivery with his left foot, but an equally adept delivery may well come from. Adam Lalana, that Fox just walks away. Lalana, we killed it in dangerously, and it was dropped by Jamie Ashdown. And the player in the back of the net was Jos Hoyvelt, who has scored some important goals this season. And Hoyvelt, how close was he? Oh, marginal. And there was a little bit of butterfingers there by the Portsmouth goalkeeper. Excellent delivery by Lalana. Hoyvelt threw himself at the ball. It was fumbled by Ashdown. whose 12-match unbeaten run was ended by Ian Holloway's back ball last weekend. And Kelvin Davis, who's only missed one match this season, and that was against Blackpool here at St Mary's in a match earlier in the campaign.
volleyed clear by Ward. Just sliced at thin air there, Hoyvelt. Helped out by Fox. Throw will go Portsmouth's way. And the corresponding fixture before Christmas, it was Ricky Lambert who headed. Southampton into a lead in the second half before a late equaliser by Joel Ward, who takes the throw now. Playing at fullback, the versatile player. At four by Maguire. Neat skill by Etuhu. Etuhu. Just tries to get it onto his right foot, cleverly done by Atuhu. Norris is in the middle, and away by Jose Fonte. Here's Rekic. Rekic is pushing forward well there. Michael Appleton would be pleased with the way his side of acclimatised here. Call it 4-5-1, call it 4-3-3, but his side are on the front foot. They're certainly pushing Atuhu and Varney in advanced positions down the flanks. And Nigel Atkins knew it wouldn't be easy. Often quote in the Articles of War, never, ever underestimate the opposition. And is he going to follow in the footsteps of the late Ted Bates and Laurie McMenemy by leading Saints into the top flight of English football? just biding his time and Hammond was in the hole and the Saints captain has found Lambert from distance Lambert can score from range and the Ports have got every player back behind the ball by Chris Maguire and that's come off the back of the Ports of defender Fox tried to get the delivery in his tattooed upper arms uh, 3,000 Portsmouth fans behind Jamie Ashdown's goal hold their breath. Lambert has gone on the near post, the Southampton top goal scorer and championship player of the year. Lalana with the flag kick. Sharp and Gulia far post. It's way over hit by Adam Lalana, and that's most uncharacteristic by one of the most gifted players in the second tier of English football, Adam Lallana has committed his future to the club and many have gone to pastures new, the likes of Theo Walcott and Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain and Gareth Bale Lallana has stayed loyal and he's trying to lay it off here for Lambert it will eventually find its way to Fox who goes to goal and that's gone many a mile wide and heading towards the Itchen River Danny Fox, the Southampton fullback. He's actually been capped by Scotland by former Saints boss George Burley. Here's Norris's ball forward, and Maguire's found a little room here with Hoyvelt, the company, and support from Fraser Richardson. And Chris Maguire has joined a struggling outfit, but he's playing regular football. Karim Rekic who moved to Manchester City from Feyenoord and is uh, learning his trade for Roberto Mancini's Premier League title chasers out on loan. And Rekic's underneath this, but Pierce threw himself at the ball. Now Norris, just look a little bit shaky at times at the back, Southampton. Nice ball from Halford, Rekic. And it will find its way through here to Atuhu, has a sight on goal. Kelvin Atuhu, parried by Davis. And Norris with a follow-up, hits Hoybelt, and Southampton are rocking a little at the back, and that's the first clear sight on goal. Kelvin Atuhu forcing the save from the Southampton goalkeeper. Kelvin Atuhu, who's finding his way again in football, the Nigerian rebuilding his career, wasn't part of the Manchester City Premier League 25. He actually trained at Portsmouth unnoticed for two and a half months before he signed. Before he was allowed to sign anyway, such as the uh, difficulty with Portsmouth's transfer dealings. That's a poor ball for by Ricardo Rocha. And Kelvin Atuhu, who is the elder brother, uh, Dixon is at Fulham. Here he is, 
Uh, got a really good shot away. It was a, a good parry by Kelvin Davis. Too much room, though. Nigel Atkins would think Davis made a comfortable save. Sharp. That's a well picked out pass by Hammond and Gooley goes for goal from a ridiculous distance, really. Gooley do Prado. He's an enigmatic player. You either love him or dislike him. Uh, but he has made a contribution of 11 goals this season. That wasn't one of his better efforts. Nigel Atkins, always enthusiastic, always pragmatic. Took Reading uh, a while to get into gear this season, but they are the form team at the moment in the race for automatic promotion, which really has boiled down to Southampton, Reading and Sam Allardyce's West Ham. And eventually finds Lalana. Nice one-two with Lambert. Lalana, neat football, sharp. Hammond. Thought about a side run goal. Fox is offering. And Fox sees a little gap and goes to goal. The outside of his left foot. And it was a good effort. The ball was close to his feet. And he's uh, tried to get a bit of bend with the outside of the boot. And he controlled it well. Uh, just ran a few yards into a little gap. And oh, did Jamie Ashdown get a touch to that? Danny Fox certainly thought so. Oh, I think he may well have got a fingertip there. And... Perhaps Southampton a little unlucky. <laughs> Reckitt will challenge with Gooley. Halford again for Portsmouth. Varney couldn't quite keep it in play. They are looking to use width here, Michael Appleton side. Luke Varney, who was actually signed to replace David Nugent in the Portsmouth side. He had a, a difficult start to the season after scoring a couple of times. He found himself out of the side for nearly four months with a knee injury. Homegrown Joel Ward for Portsmouth. Described that equaliser at Fratton Park before Christmas as the best moment of his footballing life. And here's Jason Pierce wearing the captain's armband. Pierce, one of several Portsmouth players that attracted interest from other clubs during the emergency loan window. Ward. Jamie Ashdown, who's the number one now for Portsmouth, with Stephen Henderson's departure to West Ham United. It's a cagey game now. Chances at a premium as Varney wins the ball against Richardson. Fox. Rocher with a foot in. Ricardo Rocher, who's one of the surviving FA Cup finalists for Portsmouth from the 2010 contest against Chelsea. That's a neat ball for by Adam Lallana, looking for the run of Jack Cork. Cork not quite quick enough. and Varney and Hoyvelt will get a difficult pass back to Davis and a decent header back by Halford Fonte with more work to do 
Portsmouth have been working very hard in that area, but they've let the ball get away there. That's a sloppy ball forward by Ricky Lambert. Russia runs to safety. And then misplaces his clearance. Ricardo Rocha, who's been sent off four times for Portsmouth in his career so far, spent a short time at Spurs, and here come Portsmouth down the left side, and Maguire has just let the ball run out of play. Watch that uh, goal that Chris Maguire scored for the Scotland under-21s this morning, it was straight after a Norway goal, north of the border, and straight from the kickoff, ball was touched to him, and he scored from fully 50 yards. Both man managers in close attendance on the touchline. Almost Liverpool against Manchester United. The boy from Birkenhead is Nigel Atkins. Michael Appleton from Salford. There's nothing to choose in these opening exchanges. Here's Lalana for Southampton. And now Lambert's made the run. Lambert has Rosser in front of him, uh, unselfishly knocked it in, and again to the far post, and it's missed by Billy Sharp. And half cleared, the shot on goal is from Hammond, and that's a fine block by David Norris. It's a neat turn by Maguire, but equally good defending by Ricardo Rocha, not once but twice by uh, Jose Fonte, and then Fonte is caught by Allen. There's an advantage being played by the referee. Uh, Lambert into Lallana in the ports of the penalty area. In the corner. Well, there was a late challenge there by Scott Allen on Jose Fonte, who had twice got around Portsmouth players. And the young Portsmouth lone midfielder, uh, well, it was clumsy, really, by Scott Allen, and you have to say unnecessary as well from the 20-year-old. Another player lent from West Bromwich Albion, Michael Appleton's former club. And Neil Swarbrick, who has already shown a yellow card to Morgan Schneiderlin and Chris Maguire, this time elects to keep the card in his pocket. Allen slightly lucky. At short corner, too quick for the referee. What is the conversation here by the referee's assistant Charles Breakspear on this near side with Neil Swarbrick. Uh, Neil Swarbrick now, I think, has taken a card out of his pocket, has he? And he's taken advice from his assistant on this Kingsland stand touchline, and he's running towards Ricardo Rocha, and Rocha is cautioned. Must have been something he said. So a flurry of yellow cards in this first half of this keenly contested Hampshire derby. Pushed half a dozen into the ports of penalty area, Lalana's corner, Gooley was beaten in the air by Reckick, still not cleared, coming down with snow on that one, back in by Lambert, Sharp tries to turn! Razor Sharp! Billy Sharp! Southampton have broken the Derby deadlock, and what a difference a week makes! He missed a penalty last weekend, this weekend, deadly! Southampton have taken another step towards the Premier League, and it's a striker's instinct in the six-yard box. Billy Sharp left Jamie Ashton with no chance. He was so close to him, but he managed to find his spot and finish with a plum. A sweet finish for Billy Sharp, and that's why Nigel Atkins brought this player to St Mary's. And now, after Reading and West Ham laid down the gauntlet yesterday, Nigel Atkins' side have responded in true promotion-chasing fashion. Billy Sharp's fourth goal of the season, And that has set this South Coast derby alight. The red and white Harbour St Mary's are in raptures. 
and that will settle the nerves. Well, Billy Sharp, who helped Scunthorpe to promotion with Nigel Adkins in 2007, is actually shown a yellow card there in his exuberance after scoring the goal. something to hold on to. And here comes Southampton with their tails up now. Lallana nearly spun back into Sharp's path again. Wasn't the greatest defending by Portsmouth, him, truth be told, from that set-piece. Wreckett in an advanced position in the Southampton half. <laughs> Worked it well. Jamie Ashton beaten. So long he's been in the shadows of many goalkeepers at Portsmouth, the likes of David James and Sander Vesterveld and the like. Shaka Hislop. And now he's getting his opportunity. He did nothing or could do nothing to keep out that Billy Sharp finish. Here's Ward and Portsmouth are going to have to come from behind just as they did at Fratton Park before Christmas. Etuhu's had Portsmouth's best chance so far. Ward's got some space for a cross into the near post. Good delivery! And Vardy has somehow fluffed his lines. It's a sort of chance that he normally takes, Luke Varney. It was well played by Joel Ward, who got width down the right. He found a good delivery. Varney made the run and got the contact. But it's good defending by Jose Fonte that did enough to put off the Portsmouth striker. Luke Varney may be just a little short on confidence at the moment. Hasn't scored for a long time. Washer hooked a moment ago. And Sharp in unison with the cheers of the home supporters. It's Billy Sharp's goal that edges this Hampshire derby at St Mary's with quarter of an hour to go to half-time. And Portsmouth will have the goal kick. Appleton, the Portsmouth manager, who was in temporary charge at West Bromwich Albion last February when the club dismissed Roberto Di Matteo. What a difference a year makes. Di Matteo now leading Chelsea to the Champions League semi-final against Barcelona. Lambert making a run in front of him, so to Lalana. Second opportunity for the Southampton captain. Southampton number seven, Ricky Lambert, is trying to pick out Gooley. Away by Reckick. Nice knockdown by Cork. And somehow uh, Lalana found the shot. Sharp goes for goal. And no wonder his confidence is high. He must have felt rotten last week at Bloomfield Road when he saw the early penalty saved. But now. He is feeling on top of the world. And Southampton are heading to the top of the championship. Dean Hammond, who's been in and out of the Southampton side this season. And he returns to wear the captain's armband today. Rekka has room, the teenage Dutch fullback again. Well fought here for Portsmouth. A two who has switched flanks. Rekic elects to come back to Scott Allen. Good change of pace by Allen. 20-year-old driving at the Southampton defence. And that's a neat reverse ball to Norris. And Norris!
Morris, that's a good cross up in the air and away by Hoybelt. And it's a dangerous challenge there by Scott Allen. Oh, it's the exuberance of youth, perhaps, but he threw himself at the Lana, and this time Scott Allen will not escape a yellow card. Maybe just when the Lana was on the ground there, he looked up to see if the referee was going to book the player. But the unshaven Southampton winger, Adam Lallana, goes to ground. And Scott Allen, the lone midfielder from West Bromwich Albion, is shown a yellow card. who hasn't yet played for West Bromwich Albion. He moved from Dundee United and is here to try and boost this unlikely relegation escape act for Portsmouth. They have won twice in the last four games with home wins against Birmingham City and Hull. <laughs> Portsmouth have certainly not been outplayed here. They start the game as heavy underdogs but the formation and the tactics that Michael Appleton has employed, he said he was coming here to win, and he's standing by that mantra. Chris Maguire, who made six appearances for Aberdeen, and helped Kilmarnock stay in the Scottish Premier League last season on loan. Way by Fox. Firm header by the Portsmouth captain Jason Pearce. Washington Fonte defended well. Cork wins the midfield duel with Allen. And Cork drives forward. Lambert again had peeled wide. There's a rather lackluster ball across the face of the Portsmouth penalty area. Having quite a quiet game so far, Ricky Lambert, the Championship and Football League top goal scorer. Nice ball by Chris Maguire, a two who's round the back here. He's got Richardson in front of him. Kelvin, a two who for Portsmouth. Maguire goes for goal! Oh, what a goal by Chris Maguire! You will not see a better strike of the championship this season! And the blue half of St Mary's erupts! He scored one from the halfway line from the Scotland under-21s a while ago. Now he's blasted one from an angle into the top of the Southampton net. And Scotland international Chris Maguire has Portsmouth level in the South Coast derby. A two who gave him the ball. He only had one thing in his mind, and it was just too fierce for Kelvin Davis on his near post. What confidence, what ability, and what a strike from Chris Maguire. Well, Davis didn't get a sniff. The ferocity of the shot was just too good for the Southampton goalkeeper. And Chris Maguire has his third and most important goal since his lone move from Derby County. Here comes Southampton straight away, but it's parity once more in the Hampshire derby. Billy Sharp gave Southampton the lead, but now, with nine minutes to go to half-time, it's level once more. Oh, it's hotting up here. How his heart must be racing, Michael Appleton, and how proud he must be of his players. noise from the northern end of the ground here. Ward. Norris's ball forward. This time no alarms for Kelvin Davis, who kept four clean sheets in March and only just missed out on the Championship Player of the Month award yesterday. But I don't think there are too many goalkeepers anywhere that would have kept out that strike from Chris Maguire. Lalana and Sharp is onside and failed to control.
A few grey hairs there now, and there'll be a few more after that shot from Chris Maguire. Look at the technique, kept his head down, and it didn't graze the woodwork as it went in as well. It's level pegging here at St Mary's in the dying embers of this first half. Certainly the Reading and West Ham United fans will have been out of their, their seats and that strike by Chris Maguire. That equaliser will be music to the ears of Brian McDermott and Sam Allardyce. And Maguire again uh, causing problems for Jos Hoyvelt. It comes off Hoyvelt. Oh, that's a foul, is it, by Reckitt? It's going to be a goal kick anyway to Southampton, but uh, Reckitt threw himself in anyway. Holland Youth International against uh, his more experienced countryman, Karim Reckitt, against Jos Hoyvelt. And it was bouncing awkwardly. He was just trying to shepherd it out of play. And Reckick, reckless was Reckick, just from behind. Not malicious, though. On that occasion, it really is a good contest. So often these affairs are cagey and nervous, but both sides are going for it. Lambert's ball in, away by Russia. Norris, and everybody's expecting Portsmouth to be relegated. They're playing with a real freedom here, Michael Appleton's side. Ward, Norris again, now Norris has got Varney making a run, he mistimed it and didn't watch the line, it won't matter, it's a goal kick anyway. And Michael Appleton, who was on the backroom staff at the Hawthorns when West Bromwich Albion managed the great escape in 2005 and Portsmouth were involved in that on the final day. They went down 2-0 to the Baggies in the West Midlands, that kept West Brom up and they'd been bottom at Christmas and survived. Can his side do the same? Here, Richardson keeps it in play, well played by the full-back. That crossed into the middle, and Russia did well, because Lallana was just behind, and the experienced former Portuguese international did just enough. A good positional play by Ricardo Rocha. Corner has come back to... The Southampton captain, Hammond, Fox. Now, this is where Lalana's dangerous, and he fooled Varney there. What Lalana does like to do is to come in off the left flank. He's a predominantly right-footed player. He'll show you the left and come to the right and normally get a shot away. Back to goal there, lovely Cruyff turn, and he was just clipped by Luke Varney. Now, with under five minutes to go in this first half, Jamie Ashdown will not want to concede here. Well, Ricky Lambert is lining this up as though he fancies a shot. He scores all sorts of goals, Ricky Lambert. Right up there in the all-time post-war great goal scorers for Saints. And it's not a dissimilar position where Chris Maguire scored the Portsmouth equaliser, albeit that was on the run. This is a set piece. Southampton's number seven, Ricky Lambert, back in the side will take the free kick. Oh, good save! That was travelling. Back in by Fonte and away by Russia once more. It doesn't matter what range it really is for Ricky Lambert, he still fancies his chances from any sort of distance. And he forced a smart save by Jamie Ashdown. Well, neither side afraid to have a pop on goal here. It is a free-flowing Solent derby at St Mary's. And it is anybody's game with three minutes to go to half time. The corner is from Danny Fox. And away by Ward. The shot from Lalana. Oh, that went through a melee of players. I wonder how close that was because Adam Lalana looked skyward. He got a good left foot volley away. It went through a whole congregation of players from both sides. It dropped out the air. It was an excellent volley, and it only went a couple of yards wide. What a good effort that was. Oh, it was. It just actually grazed the post. It was Fonte who moved out of the way, and no wonder he wipes his brow. And that's how close Southampton were to going back in front. Oh, 
Food for thought for Nigel Atkins. The Articles of War, Sun Z, never ever underestimate the opposition and how well he was right to give that advice to his players. Portsmouth have been good value for this 1-1 scoreline. Lambert and Pierce did well. Knocked on by Varney. A slice clear by Kelvin Davis. Well played, Varney caught it early there and was looking for a quick throw. They just want to keep the momentum going here, Michael Appleton's side. And they've won another throw. Well, I don't think it touched a Southampton player. So Portsmouth will take it anyway. Karim Rekic on loan from Manchester City. How well he's acclimatised at left back since Joe Mattock had to move back to West Bromwich Albion. Rekic once more. And uh, it was miscontrolled by David Norris. We're into the final minute of the first half in this richly entertaining South Coast derby. And you can certainly see which of the two managers is more calm. The phlegmatic Michael Appleton with the world on his shoulders and the world awaiting Nigel Adkins in the Premier League. If their destiny is in his own hands. Here's Gooley now, and Gooley's through. Good save by Ashdown at his near post. Well, that's the combination that Nigel Adkins was looking for to work. And it was Lambert who fed it through to the Brazilian. And Gooley had got around the back of Karim Rekic and forced a good parry at the near post by Jamie Ashdown. We're almost into added on time in the final seconds of this first half. It'll be three minutes of added on time. Corner from Fox, difficult in-swinger away by Varney who threw himself in front of his goalkeeper and got a knock to the head for his problems, uh, for his efforts as well. Luke Varney has been in the walls this season with injuries and knocks and it just seemed to be pointing to his shoulder there, the player who started in the factories of Leicester as a, a quality assurance manager. And he's certainly got a bit of a thump there from his own goalkeeper, he's OK now. Lambert's trying to turn, and here's Cork, and Cork just tried to slot it through for Lallana, who will still get it. Gooley's onside, and nearly fell for Cork once more. Richardson's pushed up from the back. And that's cool. Did it hit Norris's hand? I think it did. Well, he'll plead innocence there, the former Ipswich Town midfielder David Norris. And he has given a free kick, and there are a nervy few moments here at the end of the first half for Michael Appleton's side to contend with. Well, they'll pull every player back behind the ball here, Portsmouth. There's a goal here for Southampton, would be a real body blow after they've dragged themselves back into this game. Again, Fox with a set piece, and that cultured left foot from the former Burnley man into the near post, header on goal is wide! Oh, what a chance that was for Jos Hoytveld! He's had two half opportunities in this first period, and Hoyveld should have hit the target. Once more, it was an excellent delivery from Daddy Fox. Hoyveld threw himself at the ball, but couldn't find the target. Well, there was a, a cluster of players at the near post, so maybe uh, it was more difficult than the chance looked. And Portsmouth win a free kick now at the other end. Well, deep in injury time here. Billy Sharp breaking the deadlock for Southampton. Chris Maguire's stunning cross shot, bringing Michael Appleton side level. And now, well, if Portsmouth could score now, the blue half of St Mary's would erupt. It's Allen's delivery away by Hammond. And Southampton have every player back this time. A two who is wide. And this time, Fox is at the other end of the pitch defending and uh, take a bang to the left instep. Again, Southampton have players back, good ball forward by Russia. Maguire, the Portsmouth goalscorer. 
Neat back hill to a two-hoo. A two-hoo in the Southampton box, still a two-hoo. Norris might fancy a shot on goal. Ward's overlapping, low cross and corner for Portsmouth. But there won't be time to take that corner. We've reached the halfway point of this South Coast derby. Southampton are chasing automatic promotion and have taken themselves temporarily to the top of the championship again with Billy Sharp reacting first in the penalty area. But then, in the final ten minutes of the half, Chris Maguire's electrifying cross shot has got underdogs Portsmouth level and given themselves a survival lifeline. Billy Sharp, who was booked after his celebrations, has a long chat with the officials and referee Neil Swarbrick. But it's on a knife edge here at half-time at St Mary's and much to look forward to in the second half. In this second period, Michael Appleton's side will be kicking towards their own supporters. More than 3,000 behind Kelvin Davis's goal at the northern end of the ground. Fox hacks clear. Portsmouth, who are second bottom of the championship and still five points adrift of safety. Michael Appleton feels his side will probably need to win at least four of the remaining half dozen matches. And well, Southampton know they're in a contest. Here's Reckick. This time Varney has timed his run and he's round the back here, Luke Varney. Richardson in front of him, tees it up. Oh, Maguire's fluffed a golden opportunity to get Portsmouth in front. Oh, what a tonic that would be for Portsmouth at the start of this second period. Luke Varney did everything right, got round the back of Richardson and put it on a plate for the Scotland international. He was too casual. Just needed to put his foot through the ball, opened up the body, and he's side-footed it horribly wide, Chris Maguire. A certainly spur Portsmouth. They've got a bit of defending to do here. Skyward clearance for some wreckage. Well defended by Joel Ward, just let it go over his head. And so Hampton are three points clear of third place West Ham. That's the difference. They won promotion last season, runners up to Brighton in League One. Nigel Adkins has become somewhat of an expert in getting teams promoted. Jamie Ashdown, who was well worked and responded well to a peppering of his goal in that opening 45 minutes. The work rate of Portsmouth has been eye-catching, which it would have to be because they're just trying to disrupt a free-flowing rhythmic pattern of passing that Nigel Adkins side like to employ on home soil. And home form has been terrific here this season. Only beaten twice by Bristol City and Leicester. Maguire goes to ground, no free kick. Allen just stuck a foot out there, just needs to be a little careful, he has been booked. Scott Allen. Okay, Norris working hard and closing down Hammond. sets of supporters are ringing out their anthems around St Mary's it's a full house as there's a mistake by Greg Halford just lost concentration the recovery was from Joel Ward and Halford atones good header forward it'll fall for Reckick what a defining 45 minutes this will be in the championship promotion and relegation reckoning Fox, who was in the top flight last season with Burnley. Jack Cork has also played there. Here is Cork, who scored in the Premier League a few seasons ago for the Clarets against Spurs. Richardson. Richardson's trying to go around Reckick, and he was obstructed. Well, Nigel Atkins has chosen to start with Fraser Richardson, the former Leeds United defender in this derby. They feel that his attacking prowess is perhaps... That's slightly more advantageous in this type of environment. 
after the uh, more solid defending of Danny Butterfield, who's on the bench. Again, Ports have had every player back behind the ball, and he does put a good delivery into the penalty area. Does Danny Fox. Lambert's in there, Fonte, sharp two. Overhit, though, by Fox and respite for the Portsmouth defence. The one thing that Nigel Adkins does have is players challenging for nearly every position. He has a really strong squad, and that's what any boss would want. Competition for places, and there's always somebody ready to come in in case of injury or tactical rejugging. Away by Fox this time. Jose Fonte, who went through administration himself in his time at Crystal Palace. Allen's working hard. Nicely tidied up. Ward's going through the gears. It's a little bit of a dummy there from Allen just to create space, and they're working it well here, Portsmouth. At Ward. Oh, he was looking for the run from Norris. Norris stopped, felt he was offside. And breaks down but the application of Portsmouth has been admirable after such a, a resounding defeat on home soil at Fratton Park against Burnley last weekend they really fell to pieces in that 5-1 drubbing by Eddie Howe's side tight at the bottom the next 48 hours for Southampton is massive with Crystal Palace at Selhurst Park to come on Easter Monday. And, uh, so much pressure and expectation, it can sometimes do funny things. Russia for Portsmouth, booked in the first half. Watched by Richardson. And Rekic again does like to push forward and squeeze. He's doing a good job there, the teenage Dutch defender. Lambert is the target, it was over Lambert and Rocha. Rocha at the second time of asking, hooks clear. There's a bit of room here for Scott Allen, and he uses it. Now, Tuhu has a chance here to run at Fox. Tuhu, the Nigerian, oh, that's a good cross into the middle away by Richardson. Oh, and it just uh, went through a huge, great open space and found Billy Sharp, and now there's whip from Richardson. And that, that is a Portsmouth throw-in. And all the Southampton supporters in the Kingsland stand are out of their seats, but that clearly hits Fraser Richardson on the heels. Richardson, who's four times been a playoff loser in his career and was relegated from the Premier League with Leeds United. Rekic, his throw comes to nothing. It's still delicately poised in the South Coast derby. St Mary's is packed to the rafters. And this Adam Lalana, the player to unlock the key of the force of defence on that occasion. And maybe just one or two signs of agitation from the home supporters. They know the importance of this game, not only for local bragging rights, but far more than that. Three points would take Southampton a step closer to the promised land of the Premier League. Good header forward by Halford. The longer Portsmouth can keep it level, the more they will grow in confidence. But here comes Lalana, and now Lalana accelerates. Sharp is wide. Lalana goes down under the challenge of Halford, and there's a little bit of afters from those two as well. The referee Neil Swarbrick is just keeping an eye on that one. Here's Cork. Now there's room for Dean Hammond. Sharp and Lambert are waiting on the edge of the penalty area. Now can Lalana find a way around Joel Ward? Again, he puts it onto his right foot. Good cross into the middle, and Ashdown claims well. He had a, a big right arm wrapped around his uh, upper body there from Ricky Lambert. Uh, felt it was an elbow. Uh, Ricky Lambert is not that type of player. He is unassuming, and he is potent as a striker. He's had a quiet afternoon, though, by his standards, and here come Portsmouth once more. 
Maguire is wide. Oh, Maguire, <laughs> he couldn't do it again, could he? No, that was almost an impossible angle. And a rueful smile as it went into the side netting. The Southampton supporters are trying to rally their team here to get a head of steam going. And Gooley's doing just that. He's drifted around Reckick, but tackled well by Allen. And now Allen again. He's charging forward here for Portsmouth. Scott Allen for Pompey. Oh, he's just stood on the ball. And now there are big gaps opening up. And there's a little bit of tiredness creeping in, even though it's in the early stages of the second half. It's the cross from Sharp. Hits Jason Pierce, the Portsmouth captain. There are big, big gaps in the centre of midfield at the moment. Southampton with Richardson, deep cross, comfortable for Ashdown though once more. It doesn't look like a team that were beaten 5-1 on home soil last weekend, Portsmouth. They've really pulled themselves together. And Michael Appleton said that this was the best possible type of game to banish that result from their memory. And so far, his team have responded in kind. Ford from Cork, and Sharp is onside, miscontrolled. A low cross. Russia takes no chances. gets no change out of Scott Allen once more and there are one or two isolated boos for the Brazilian around the ground it does become exciting it does become anxious when there is such a big prize at the end of the tunnel and Southampton are so close to crossing the finishing line Nigel Atkins wants to finish the job Gooley half stop sharp neat turn from Milana tackled by Halford corner Southampton Again, Danny Fox is coming across to take the corner kick for Southampton, a player who has Champions League experience north of the border with Celtic. He knows all about success. There's a big noise inside St Mary's now. It's into the middle and away once more, bravely by Russia. Shot on goal, fantastic save by Ashdown. Adam Lallana, he hit a volley with his left foot in the first half and grazed the post. That time it was the opposite foot, and he's caught an excellent stop from Jamie Ashdown. They're knocking on the door here, Southampton. Here's the corner and the header on goal. What a save by Ashdown! Magnificent athleticism. Fonte threw himself at the ball. And the central defender looks in bewilderment as Ashdown's outstretched arm clips it over the bar. It was his wrong hand. What a save. Oh, it's warming up here in the South Coast derby. And Southampton are giving the Portsmouth defence a torrid time. Away this time by Pierce. Here's Lalana, half stopped and away. And at last, Portsmouth's overworked defenders can breathe again. Oh, it looked as though Varney was leading on the back of Fonte. And Varney hooks clear. Here's Maguire. There's always the chance that the more Southampton push forward, there'll be gaps at the other end for Portsmouth to exploit. And Allen's been very adroit at doing that at Maguire. And Varney's not quite quick enough. Hoyvelt will cover and away by Kelvin Davis. It's a fascinating contest now. Portsmouth have to win to keep their uh, chances of escaping relegation alive and Reckick's done well there against Sharp. There's some fabulous contests going on here, some 50-50 duels all over the pitch. And as much as Southampton are smothering and forcing Portsmouth back, they're taking the punches. It's like Ali against Foreman all over again. Here's Ward down the right for Portsmouth. Maguire. It was half stopped and away and behind by Hoyvelt. It'll be a corner kick to Portsmouth in front of their fans who are getting behind their team here. They know they're responding to the challenge.
gets pushed forward, so too as the ports of the captain, Jason Pearce. There is some aerial options here as Allen drives it in. It's headed up in the air by Ward. And Ward again challenging with Hammond. Ooh, is it a hand by Court? The shot on goal by Norris is half stopped. And Portsmouth this time are forcing Southampton back. End to end seesaw encounter in the South Coast derby. And Southampton, this time they have respite. Oh, it's bite your nails time here for both of these sides. And a change about to be made. The impact player for Southampton is Steve De Ridder, the Belton winger. And well, Adam Lallana surely not coming off. It's Gulli De Prado who will make way. There's a little word in the ear for Adam Lallana. And now Steve De Ridder will come over to the right side of this Southampton attacking formation. De Ridder, who was a flying Belgian winger, came off the bench to score an important goal at Reading earlier in the season. Here's Lambert, difficult bouncing ball, still Lambert, and still. De Ridder's first touch. The substitutes cross, Lambert missed it, and so did Lallana, and the chance goes away. There's hardly a moment to draw breath. Such has been the frenetic nature of the latest in this long-running South Coast derby. 32nd league meeting, 14 wins to Southampton and eight to their neighbours. Well, that's a dangerous ball by Jose Fonte across the six-yard box to his uh, central defensive colleague, Jos Hoyvelt. Lambert's the target. Oh, that time Pierce missed it. Lambert's onside. No. He was leaning on the courts of the captain, and it's been that sort of a day so far for Ricky Lambert. 28 goals in all competitions this season. And yet it was uh, probably the right decision. Lambert just a little bit too physical on Jason Pierce, who took Bournemouth to the playoffs in League One last season. Jason Pierce. Underneath it, here's Richardson. But Vardy wins it, and Vardy tried an audacious chip. Well, it was the wrong option, really. He'd done well to win the ball, but he was never going to beat Kelvin Davis with that sort of an effort. Maybe more the, the Chris Maguire powerful strike was the order of the day. Well, let's watch those saves from Ashdown again. What a volley that was at full stretch, almost like Lev Yashin there, Jamie Ashdown in days of yore. And here comes Southampton again, and again it's Lalana. And again, the effort is just off target. Well, here's the chance. He had a look up, and he's dragged his shot wide. But Jamie Ashdown, who is Portsmouth's longest serving player, and has played second fiddle to many a goalkeeper at Fratton Park. Look at that save from Fonte. He was going the wrong way, stuck out the opposite hand and tipped it over the bar. It's a day to be proud of for Jamie Ashdown. And there's a rather despondent Gulli de Prado, the first Brazilian to play for Southampton in more than 100 years. But he'll play no part more. Here's his replacement, Steve de Ridder. And the Belgian has tricked David Norris to find a bit of room. And now he changes pace. Across to cover is Halford. And Halford has done really, really well. Well, Greg Halford had a short period at Reading a few seasons ago. It didn't work out, neither did it at Premier League Wolves. As he's moved from the West Midlands to the South Coast. He's a versatile player, but he never quite got on to achieve what many said he would in the game. And, uh, Fonte was shoved in the back by Luke Varney. And some rather ironic cheers from the home supporters who feel that maybe Neil Swarbrick hasn't given them the rub of the green in the decisions in this second period. Norris hooks forward, Porter still have a threat with Etuhu and Varney pushing on and Maguire down the middle. Payne Halford strong at the back, caught. Once more, the space for Richardson to move into.
Lambert has his back to goal, and that's a clever pass inside to Cork. And that's good defending by Scott Allen, really timed the challenge well. Only 20 years of age. And, uh, well, he's angry there, his Scottish international teammate, Chris Maguire, didn't make the run he was looking for. Here's Jack Cork once more, who was on as a first-half substitute with Morgan Schneidlin, forced to leave the field with a knee injury. Four poor pass four by Richardson, Reckitt was strong. Ponte timed the jump well. Look at the room for Fox on the left side if uh, Hammond can find him. And again, neat interchange of passing. Reverse slide rule ball to Sharp, who was a yard offside. Well, they are clever in the final third. They do like to play quick passing to feet and keeping it on the ground, and that's how they tend to open up defences, Nigel like inside. Nigel Atkins, the physio turn manager, and now trying to manipulate Saints into a return to the Premier League after a seven year absence. Cork stood on the ball and uh, was in danger of losing possession. Oh, lucky it found its way to Steve Derrida. Been encouraged to go forward, Richardson. Sharp is the target. Oh, and Sharp's bundling his way through. And once more, that's good, honest defending, first by Rocha and then by Joel Ward. No way through there. Billy Sharp, who is still this season's top goal scorer at Doncaster. There's never a question of a penalty there. And now again, Varney is round the back away from Richardson. He's got round Rosser too, and down goes Varney, and he's only going to get a corner kick. Well, he felt he might have had a little more. He's clever at doing that. He rolls on the defender, Luke Varney, and just comes in off the left flank, predominantly just working it with the right foot. There he goes, past Rosser with the outside of the right foot. And, oh, crikey. <sighs> he did really well, and he, was, he just got too far in front of uh, Fonte. Did Fonte catch Luke Varney? Only a corner. And well, Scott Allen is earning the wrath of the hardcore support of the Southampton supporters behind Kelvin Davis' goal as he's tying up his shoelace. There's a, a quartet of... Well, in fact, there's a, half a dozen players all on that near post as Scott Allen is waiting to take this corner kick for Portsmouth, level pegging at one apiece. And the ball is outside the quadrant. The referee spotted it. Allen with the delivery. The far post is Varney away by Fonte. But a two who will collect here, he's got Fox in front of him. Now can the former Manchester City winger find a trick? It's a low cross, Varney's on the near post. Varney's trying to turn and try to tee it up for Ward. A chance gets away once more, and Southampton are in trouble as they lose possession. And this is a good spell for Michael Appleton Sportsmith. They've weathered the early storm in the second half. And Allen has been Pompey's best player. And Allen from distance, dear. Oh. Still learning his trade, still in the infancy of his career. And now Dave Kitson is about to come on for Portsmouth. Dave Kitson has been la left out of the last four or five squads for Pompey. He lost his confidence. And the player to make way is Kelvin Etuhu. That's a bold move for Michael Appleton. So how does he switch it here? Does Kitson go down the middle and Maguire go wide right? That would seem to be the uh, obvious selection. But Kitson who's failed to score in his last 19 matches. What a time to break that duck. Norris is in there, he's shoved in the back there by Jack Cork. Oh, and then uh, foolishly kicked away by Dean Hammond. And uh, Greg Halford makes the point. Yeah, just a little shove with the uh, left arm on David Norris. 
again. David Norris, who used to be a waiter, and he served up an unlikely away win here in the South Coast derby for Portsmouth. Varney's the target. Ooh, Fonte, that's not a, an effective clearance. And Varney uh, wins the ball against De Ridder. And he's gone around Fonte. And away by Richardson off the Portsmouth striker. Well, they've certainly got a threat, haven't they, Michael Appleton's side? Uh, he worked really hard to win the ball back there, Luke Varney. Knew he was running out of room. And Richardson just uh, blasted it against the shins of the player who started his career at Crew Alexandra with Dario Grady and that famous conveyor belt of production. And, uh, Pierce was strong against Sharp. with a gainer winning that midfield contest well. Maguire. And, and full stretch, Allen wins the ball and gets away from Hammond. Oh, clever play by Allen, and uh, an advantage play by the referee. Uh, Kitson up against Cork. Uh, Kitson needs support. Maguire. The flame-haired Kitson once more. He's pulling the strings at the moment, young Scott Allen in the centre of the ports of midfield. Couldn't quite pick the pass for David Norris, who made the run. 20 minutes left to play into the final quarter of the Solent derby. Level pegging at one apiece, and Ports of the game with an important challenge. And Allen will play it four towards Varney, who once more is onside. Now Kitson's busting a gut to get into the middle, on towards Kitson, overhit, and behind for a Southampton goal kick. I wonder what Dave Kitson feels about Reading's performances at the moment. Six years ago, he scored 22 goals to take the Royals into the Premier League. What he'd give for one of those to break his own scoring drought at the moment. Billy Sharp feeling the full force of this Hampshire derby, puffing his cheeks. We'll have to draw every last reserve of energy now, both of these sides, to find a winning goal. Will it be a case of the Atkins diet? So far, his recipe has seen Southampton lead the championship for much of this season after promotion in the last campaign. Uh, Pierce has lost out here, Sharp was trying to bundle through. He just misjudged the bounce there. Ooh, it was a, perhaps a, a little bit of a tug by Jason Pierce because the ports of the captain just misjudged the bounce there. And did he just shove Pierce uh, Sharp in the back? And ball by Dave Kitson, it was offside anyway. It's a rather wayward ball from Jos Hoybelt, and uh, the fans don't like it when they revert to the lump ball forward. It's not the style of play that Nigel Atkins preaches. Well, Southampton have a habit of scoring late goals in this derby down the years, the likes of Peter Crouch, Mick Shannon, Steve Moran, famously in 1984 in the FA Cup, have all found the back of the net in the dying embers of this contest. Still a little over a quarter of an hour to play and nothing to choose between these sides. There is an offside flag against Southampton. Maguire. Fox is tight behind him. Oh, that's a weak back pass, just enough legs to find Ashdown. <laughs> Allen once more. And Halford. Now, does Reckitt fancy a little run against Ridder here? He stepped inside. Just kept in play by Joel Ward, and Maguire couldn't get any change out of Fox. And then there's a push on Adam Lallana by Chris Maguire. Just has to be a little bit careful, he's scored the excellent goal in the first half, and also been booked. 
He just has to tread carefully, the Scotland international. And Southampton's last league win here against Portsmouth came in the Premier League seven and a half years ago. Dexter Blackstock and the evergreen Kevin Phillips on target that day as Southampton came from behind. Here comes Fraser Richardson. Uh, Richardson lifts it in towards the edge of the Portsmouth penalty area. Again, well defended by Michael Appleton's side. Uh, Kitson. The throw will go Portsmouth's way. And Dave Kitson whose last goal came on the 5th of November against Nottingham Forest when Steve Cottrell returned to Fratton Park and was promptly beaten by three goals to nil. Here's Maguire uh, beaten in the air by Fox. We're into the final quarter of an hour with automatic promotion and the fight to avoid relegation still high on the agenda here and both of these sides could win this match who finds the winning goal? It's hard to say. Here's Allen, who's been Portsmouth's best player. Uh, Halford runs into trouble. And again, Allen with a, a neat piece of play to rescue his side. Ward is uh, going through the gears down the right. Still Ward. Oh, it's a good run. And uh, an advantage play. Kitson picks up. Maguire is wide. And Maguire's going for the line. And Maguire will win the corner kick off Fox. Oh, what a good spell, there's a grimace from the Southampton defenders. Their big spell came in the start of this second half, they couldn't breach the Portsmouth rear guard. And now, a fiercely competitive Michael Appleton in his playing days at Preston and at West Bromwich Albion. He started at Manchester United. What a mentor Sir Alex Ferguson has been. A side renowned for late goals and important goals. Can Portsmouth do that? Allen's corner away by Fonte. Southampton had eight men back there to defend that corner. Ward collects on halfway. What a fucking pass! Again, well controlled by Allen. He's some player that drifts inside. It's a lovely run. He's fouled there by Dean Hammond. Well, Hammond claims he played the ball, but it was quick feet by the young Scotland under 21 international Scott Allen. Well, fair play to Roy Hodgson who has lent a number of West Bromwich Albion players to Michael Appleton, the former assistant head coach of the Hawthorns. And this uh, particular player has got a big future. It's been his best game in a Portsmouth shirt so far. And can Portsmouth find an unlikely winning goal here at St Mary's in the biggest of games? It's the sort of range that Maguire fancies. Halford's not back from distance either. Looks like Chris Maguire. Oh, Kelvin Davis is lining up his wall. With uh, four Southampton players in the wall. Maguire, that was a weaker one. And the second effort was even worse. Uh, much to the joy of the Southampton supporters in the northern end of the ground. Well, the local theatre is showing dirty dancing at the moment in Southampton. And if Nigel Atkins' side find a winning goal, they'll be dancing on the tables around the city this evening. With such a big game to come against Crystal Palace on Monday. And he's trying to G up his side to motivate his side. Psychology, a big part of Nigel Atkins' philosophy. Just over ten minutes left to play. Ball's going to spin up in the air and uh, look like again a handball by Dave Kitson. That's twice he's uh, uh, led with his hand. Well, no, Greg Halford used to be a, a basketball player, but uh, Dave Kitson has twice uh, gone rather like a rugby player at a line-out. And uh, Kelvin Davis has come all the way out of his goal. Twice, Kelvin Davis has scored four goals against Portsmouth in his Premier League playing days at Sunderland and in the FA Cup match here a few years ago, on by Lambert. And Lambert has a very, very quiet game. 
Just that one free kick in the first half for the most potent striker in the Football League that brought the best out of Jamie Ashdown. But Lambert has largely cut a peripheral figure. Rekic again, he's been excellent, he looks far more mature than his 10 to 17 years of age. Varney. Hoyvelt asking Sharp to go for it, it's dropping here for Lallana. And Lallana threatened to go for goal, Lambert's onside, support from Fox, plenty in the middle, but Fox once more. Oh dear, oh dear. Not the delivery that Lallana or Sharp or Lambert were looking for, there were plenty of targets. Time is running out. It is frenetic, it's nervy, the expectation amongst supporters is immense, but at the moment, the far happier brigade in this Hampshire derby come from the blue half of the Solent. It'll be a priceless point in Portsmouth's battle to avoid relegation. And who knows, they might yet mount an unlikely escape act. Another offside flag. But just a reminder, this result, if it stands, would still be enough to take Nigel Adkins, Southampton, back to the top of the championship this evening on goal difference from Brian McDermott's Reading. What a run the Royals have had. And here's a former Royals player, uh, Dave Kitson, who's fouled from behind by Jack Gore. And that's uh, no need for that. No need to brandish the old imaginary card. Uh, Jack Cork isn't that type of player either, and, and unnecessary from Dave Kitson. And here we go. Yes, it was a free kick with a slight tug, and oh, Kitson's arms are all over the place. He was like a ballet dancer there, wasn't he? They're trying to balance on ice. Well, the Southampton anthem, when the Saints go marching in, is ringing around St Mary's. But our Nigel Adkins side going to falter here as they try to march back into the Premier League. Look at the uh, energy in the Southampton manager, beckoning his players forward here to try and find a late dramatic winner. And again, stamp their authority in this nearly seesaw automatic promotion race, away by... At Pierce, only as far as Lambert, and Lambert was lethargic. It's taken off his toes by Chris Maguire. And the ball's going to drift out of play. And Chris Maguire, what an impact he's made out in the cold at Derby County with Nigel Clough preferring the likes of Steve Davis and Theo Robinson and Mason Bennett. He's come here. And my word, he's given it everything for the cause and scored a terrific goal this afternoon. Here comes Southampton once more, Lallana uh, finding a bit of room. Good tackle, though, by Halford. Ball stays in play. Can Portsmouth still provide a threat at the other end? They must have exhausted huge reserves of energy in keeping Southampton at bay. That referee plays an advantage, uh, nothing coming, or no, he's blown up for a free kick. And that time, Danny Fox was apprehended, pulled to his feet <laughs> by Dave Kitson. Who, me, ref? And uh, Neil Swarbrick just explaining exactly why the decision was given. He took charge of uh, Southampton's last home defeat here against Leicester City in the Championship and also another South Coast derby this season when Brighton won at Pratton Park earlier in the campaign. Big defending here though for Portsmouth. Fox delivers to the far post, Lambert rises and heads back and the shot on goal is over the crossbar. And again, Jose Fonte found room in the penalty area. If that had fallen to a more accomplished centre forward, it may well have found the back of the net. But Jose Fonte whose last goal was 11 months ago, and maybe that's why it came off his shin, and he ended up genuflecting to the Portsmouth goal. Maybe it's going to be one of those days. Southampton's capacity crowd still trying to rally their players, good defending once more by Ricardo Rocha across to cover. 
Russia into the side with the absence of Tal Ben Hain, the Israeli international this afternoon, and playing well alongside his skipper Jason Pierce. Another throw to Southampton. And the seconds are getting away rather quickly now, almost into the final five minutes. Lalana that scoops a ball into the ports of penalty area. Good call by Jason Pierce. It was Rekiku ducked, and now maybe uh, Ports can attack at the other end. Here's Maguire across to cover his Hovelt, and the throw in will go Ports this way. Again, much to the anger of the home supporters. That long throw taken by Kitson, looking for the early run of Maguire. Kitson again steps inside. Now Varney's in room on the left here. And a fly hack challenge by Cork, and across to cover was Scott Allen. What a good contest by two young players, and shoved away by Cork. No quarter asked or given by either of these teams in the heat of battle in this Hampshire derby. And still, there is a big prize at the end. Who wants to grab it? Is there a moment of magic from one player? Hammond. And Cork. Here's Fonte who's pushed up, and Fonte thought about going for goal. Norris in front of him. Oh, Lalala's turn, and Lalala's around the goalkeeper, and he's gone wide, and the chance has gone. Well, he wanted a penalty there. I think Lalana just lost control. He was definitely onside, and the referee has given a goal kick, and Lalana has to be calmed down, believe it or not, by the Portsmouth captain. And on such fine margins, a hugely important game's decided. There's the turn, he was onside, went around Ashdown. Now, did the trailing leg catch Lalana? Ashdown, slick turn, and then he went down late. No, surely that's a goal kick, he was looking for a penalty. And, well, a despondent Adam Lalana. He just lost control of the ball. Well, there are still options on the bench uh, for both of these teams to try and grab a dramatic late winner. Marco Futax has scored a few goals for Ports of this season, but Michael Appleton, who says he's had a million and one things go wrong this season, this would certainly be a big plus point in a turbulent campaign with Portsmouth still uncertain about their future, still without an owner and still millions in debt. Here comes Joel Ward down the right. Ward, who's late equaliser at Fratton Park, salvaged the point. He's around his marker. Here's Maguire. And Maguire trying to find room against Hammond. Needs support once more. Allen. And Allen will drive the cross into the Southampton penalty area. Kitson goes to the ball. And it was bravely claimed by Kelvin Davis. What a blood and thunder finale here at St Mary's. And Cork, oh, he's played it behind Richardson. Well, anybody who leaves the ground early now, foolish, surely. Particularly with the track record of Southampton in this fixture. Mick Shannon scored a goal at Fratton Park that relegated Portsmouth to the third tier of English football and they were FA Cup finalists. Peter Crouch scored a penalty in 2005 in the last minute and Steve Moran famously scored in the uh, match of the century, they called it. Here is Reckick, oh, that's an awful clearance by Reckick. De Ridder's onside, De Ridder's cross. Oh, and it's sliced towards his own goal by Rocha. It was Kamikaze defending by Portsmouth. And Steve De Ridder, was that the right option? He scored from that sort of angle against Reading earlier in the season, and Ricardo Rocha so nearly put it into his own net. Lalana takes two deep breaths. We've got two minutes left to play. Lalana's corner. De Ridder rises, hacked over his shoulder and away. Lalana once more. Another corner to Southampton, who are turning up the heat here at St Mary's. His team have led the way nearly all season. Lalana into the middle. Oh, it's headed in towards the oh, goal into the back of the net. Is it? No. There's an offside flag raised, and there'll be huge, huge controversy here. And Dean Hammond, the 
Southampton captain races over to have a word with the referee's assistant. Now, what has Charles Breakspear seen? Now he's awarded the goal. He's changed the decision. And Southampton have scored another great, great dramatic winner here at St Mary's. And they have now put another foot towards their journey to the Premier League. Was it Billy Sharp who got the last touch? Oh, what drama, what controversy. There are fans on the pitch here at St Mary's. And Neil Swarbrick is the figure of major controversy. But Billy Sharp has scored the second goal of the game for Southampton. His second goal. And broken hearts at the northern end of the ground. Let's look at it again. Sharp knocked it in with the side of his foot. The cross came in, it came off a Portsmouth player. And once more, Sharp is the fox in the box. He scored two against his old club, Doncaster, recently. And now he has scored the most priceless goal for Southampton and put another nail in the coffin of Portsmouth's relegation woes. Oh, what a change of mood inside St Mary's. It was allowed in the end. Michael Appleton, what must you be feeling? Billy is the hero at St Mary's. But you have to feel for Portsmouth. Four minutes left to play. Low cross. Oh, and it was miscontrolled by Norris. There's a huge police cordon around the travelling Portsmouth supporters behind Kelvin Davis's goal and there's an offside flag against Billy the hero Billy Sharp for Southampton that's why Nigel Atkins reunited with this striker his goals took Scunthorpe into the championship a few years ago and now two more priceless goals are threatening to send Southampton another big step towards the Premier League Dan Harding is about to come on the heart must be racing and the belief is restored once more with these supporters inside St Mary's and now a standing ovation for Billy Sharp who comes off because his two goals have surely won it for Saints we're in added on time here at St Mary's it's going to fall to Pierce. And Pierce has been forced wide. That Pierce somehow fashions a cross away by the substitute Harding, and they're going to have to throw everybody into the Southampton penalty area here. And he's pulling up his trousers and trying to remain calm. Control the controllables, he said. It's uncontrollable here. Long throw by Halford. Kitson's underneath it. It'll fall. No, there's a spot of pushing. And a huge cry of relief from the vast majority of a sellout crowd inside St Mary's. It's an Easter cracker in the South Coast derby, and it looks like the bragging rights are going to Southampton. And now the Tony Christie anthem is being sung with delirium by the home supporters. It was Portsmouth who used this song in 2005 to taunt their South Coast rivals. And now there is revenge in the air because this result will do much to advance Southampton's automatic promotion case. Here's Russia. We're in the dying embers of this game. Long punt forward by Russia. Nobody on the end of it. What a body blow that must have been. The goal was initially disallowed. And then the referee, Neil Swarbrick, ran across to check with his referee, Charles Breakspear, in front of the Kingsland stand. But he is a figure of controversy. Oh, it's had drama, it's had goals, it's had a little bit of everything here. And once again, the automatic promotion race in the championship and the battle to avoid the drop are really at the fore. Is there one last gasp effort here for Michael Appleton's side? Shrill whistles all the way around the ground. 
Long ball into the edge of the box. Rescher wins his header. A shot on goal. Oh, what a goal! David Norris has equalised the pass with an injury time. And the northern end of St Mary's explodes in blue colour. It's an Easter cracker from David Norris. And they pulled it out of the fire here, Portsmouth. And the bench are on the pitch. And the supporters have exploded with delight. What a strike by David Norris. 2-2. And David Norris, who scored his first goal for Ipswich last season against Southampton, has scored here again and rescued a point. He's been booked for his goal celebrations. He used to be a waiter, did David Norris. Well, he served up the perfect cocktail here. What a volley with the left foot. Kelvin Davis stranded. It was dropping down with snow on it. Set himself, wrapped it with his left foot, and a despairing Kelvin Davis couldn't keep it out. And look at that for joy. They were all but in the third tier of English football. Now they just might have a lifeline. David Norris, popular at Plymouth, a big fan's favourite at Ipswich, and now with a decisive goal for Portsmouth. Well, it would have been a shame for either team to lose this. Rushing away. It's frenetic, it's fast. We're deep in added on time here. Let's not forget Southampton would still be heading back to the top of the championship. Uh, the cross into the middle, a header on goal, it's claimed by Jamie Ashdown. Well, of course, uh, there's the cross in the middle. And Ashdown, it was a comfortable save for the Portsmouth goalkeeper. Two stunning goals from Portsmouth have twice brought Michael Appleton's side back into this game. A never-say-die attitude. He has had the world on his shoulders this season as Michael Appleton. A million and one things have gone against him. And Southampton know now perhaps those supporters realise that on the balance of play, the rearguard action by Portsmouth perhaps deserved something out of the game. One of Steve Cottrell's first signings. Ashdown's clearance. And shepherded out of play by Jose Fonte. No afters. Where do you start to begin to describe the drama in this South Coast derby? Portsmouth unbeaten in the last three meetings between the sides. And Southampton are back in pole position in the race for the Premier League. The finish line is in sight, but it's a vital point for Portsmouth in the battle to avoid the drop. And a late, dramatic, fantastic volley from David Norris has rescued a point.